Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to the DevNet Zone. Um, so this is Coding 101. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our learning labs, which are available over in the learning lab, and go through them as an actually like a guided session so you can have more information, somebody talking through it. Um, if you brought your laptop and you want to code along in this session, you're welcome to try it out and do some stuff. Um, if you want to, I can give you all the addresses so that you can um, do some of the exercises along with us. If you don't want to, if you just want to sit and absorb, that is great too. And um, you are welcome to head straight over to the learning lab anytime while the DevNet Zone is open. And we've got stations where you can do the hands-on exercises there. So you can absorb it, do it, do both, whatever, whatever you want. If you do want to code along and do some of the exercises, um, go to learninglabs.cisco.com. And you will be asked to log in. And then you can do, we'll be doing the Coding 101 and the Coding 102 labs that are, are in that address. And um, there's, it, you will, we'll use the Postman Chrome application. And um, so you'll want to install that if you don't already have it. And then we'll be doing some Python. So if you want to do it on your own system, um, you will need Python installed. But like I said, you're welcome to do that later and do it on our systems where we already have everything installed if you want to. OK, can everybody hear me OK? Is it clear? Yeah, it's good. And you can see everything OK? Do you want to zoom in more on the screen? Mm, OK, let me know if, if I need to. Like, Give me like a zoom symbol sign or something. <laughs> OK, great. <clears throat> OK, so we're going to get started. Um, so my name's Amanda Whaley. I'm a DevNet community manager. So I work on the team that puts all of the developer stuff together for Cisco. We do events like this. We work on making our APIs and SDKs available to developers, getting sample code and learning labs and tutorials out there so it's easy for developers to use. Uh, we have our sandbox team where we have online, 24-hour accessible developer sandboxes. So if you want to try a Cisco API that you've never experimented with before, you can come to our sandbox and try it out. And it's all accessible through developer.cisco.com. So that's where you get all of the DevNet stuff. A um, couple quick announcements, too. So I don't know if you've seen them, but we have our really cool DevNet scarves. Um, so these are available at the info desk. For coming to this session, you'll get a ticket. Oh, I took down the tickets. You'll get a ticket. Once you get five tickets, you get a scarf. So learning labs are worth two tickets. Sessions are worth one ticket. Talking to the people at the demo pods are worth one ticket, too. All right, so have fun. OK, let's get started. So this session, if, if you're noticing a lot of the Cisco APIs that are coming out, a lot of our SDN controller APIs, communication APIs, collaboration APIs. We're offering up a lot of REST APIs. And this session is for people who maybe are new to working with REST APIs and want to say, you know, what is all this fuss about REST APIs? And how do I use them and get an introduction to the way that they work? So it's, it is, really is coding 101. It's very, it's very basic. Um, we have more sessions through the week that build from here that go a little deeper into some of the APIs that go on to more advanced topics. This is the first one. So we'll look at what is a REST API, how do I use it, and how to make some simple calls from Python. Uh, we're going to use APICEM, which is one of our SDN controllers. And we're going to use the APIs that that controller has to offer as the examples that we walk through. OK? All right, so this is for people who are new coders, returning coders. Maybe you're really concentrating on the networking side, but now you want to move into doing some development. That's kind of the audience that we're, what we're going for. Uh, all of the samples in this are, you know, to teach, they're not probably the way you would do it in real production code, but they're to make it simple and easy to understand. OK, so this is what we talked about at the beginning. Everything we're going to do here, you can do on your own in the learning lab. And that's just the information for that. OK, so we have um, two different instances of our APICEM controller 
available for you guys to use while you're here at the DevNet Zone and also after you leave. And so you can try all of these exercises from home or your office also. If you're doing it after Cisco Live, oh, I got my stick, hold on. If you're doing it after Cisco Live, you can use um, our sandbox, our APICEM sandbox, 24-7, available all the time. When you're here, you can join the DevNet CMX Wi-Fi and use this controller. That's a, a local one to this event if you want to try some stuff. OK, so let's talk about it. So first, starting off, it's Coding 101, what is a REST web service? First, we want to talk about what, what is a web service, right? And in its simplest case, it's a way for two systems to communicate through a defined interface. For a long time, we had SOAP web services. How many people have used a SOAP web service before? Yeah, OK. And, and now, now REST is really taking over as the, the type of web service that more people are using. It's a little bit simpler to use. It's um, easier to maintain. Um, it's simpler to understand. So that's why we are going that direction. The great thing about it is that using a REST API is really just as easy as making um, an HTTP request. That's kind of what it all comes down to. So it's, it's really simple. The other great thing about REST is that you can write applications on any type of platform, and it's very easy to call the REST APIs from that. So it's great for mobile development, desktop, console apps, you know, server apps, basically any language, any platform, there are libraries for calling REST APIs, and it's very simple to do. So that's the reason that it's growing in such popularity right now. OK, so the basic idea, and it really is, is that you have some kind of system that, that offers up the API. So we're going to use Cisco APIKEM as our example. And th this is your third party application that you're writing, right? So this is your code. It makes a request, and this API sends back a response. That's really all there is at the heart of it. Um, an example would be our application asked APIKEM for a list of all the hosts on the controller, and that API sends back the list of all the hosts. So we're going to dive into how do we actually do that and what does that look like. <clears throat> so this is the actual example for APIKEM, and we can make a, a get type request using the get method. We'll have our specified URL. We'll plug in the, a, the IP address for our APIKEM controller. And then we have a set URL, and we're going to ask for the list of hosts. And we can say, starting from this index and ending at this index. And we get a list between those. And we're going to do a couple examples of how we do this. And then we get back the list of hosts returned in JSON. Has anybody used JSON? People familiar with JSON a little bit? OK, great. <clears throat> so let's look at all the pieces of that and how we put it together. So when you're making a REST request, the things you have to know are what method do you use? What URL do you use? Is there authentication? To keep it simple for our labs, we've turned off authentication for just demo purposes. Normally. If you're going to be asking the API for information and doing operations, you need to authenticate somehow, right? It needs to recognize you. So there's different ways of doing that. There's basic HTTP, there's OAuth, there's custom authentication schemes. So whenever you're learning a new API, one of your first questions is, what kind of authentication does it use? And that's one of the first things you have to figure out. Um, then you may have to set some headers. Um, and then you may send some information in the request body. So when you start using a REST API, what you need to do is say, where are the API reference documents? And I need to find out all of these things to do the operation, the function that I want to do. So let's look at an example of that for APIKEM. So in our sandbox, So right now, I'm logged into our APIKEM sandbox. 
This is the actual UI for the controller. If I click on API up here, then you'll see that I get a listing of all the different types of APIs. And if I'm looking for host, I want to go to, where is the, host. <clears throat> and you can see here is this listing for host that we were looking at. And this retrieves all of the host. It's telling me it's a get is the method. And this is the URL that I'm going to use. And then we just append that to the base URL, which the documentation gives us. It also tells me information about what I'm going to get back when I make that request. So this is the response. And it has information about this is all the information that I should see coming back to me for each host in the list that's there. So now let's, let's try it out and take a look at it. So I'm going to use a, um, a tool called Python. I mean, I'm sorry, a tool called Postman. And this is a REST client. There's a lot of different ones. There's one for Firefox called the Firefox REST client. Uh, Postman is a really popular one for Chrome. There's standalone applications. A lot of development environments have them built in. So you can find your, your favorite one. But basically, it's an easy way to make these requests and, and test it. So I'm going to enter in. Here's my URL. This is the address of my APIKM controller. This is how all of the API calls for APIKM start. This is what I got from the documentation to get a list of hosts. And then I'm going to paginate mine and say, I just want the first four hosts instead of the whole list which is good practice because the whole list might be a whole lot, right? And that might cause performance problems in your application if you're retrieving like a huge list, right? And then this is where I specify the method for get. And this is a simple one. I don't need any headers or anything else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click send. And so what that did was that sent the request to that controller. And here is the JSON that we got back. So this is the response. And you can see we've got information about each host in the list. We can see here's the host IP, what type it is, the MAC address, you know, all kinds of different information. And you can see I've got one, two, three, four, because I ask for one through four in the list. Does that make sense? Any questions on that so far? Yeah? Good? So that's that's kind of the whole idea, is like that pattern of find what you need to do to make the call, find the URL, what kind of method, what do you pass in, make the call, get something back, and now your application would do something with you know, that JSON that you got back. Um, so that's, that's really kind of the whole magic of the idea. We're going to look at a couple other examples just to reinforce how that all fits together. OK, so we didn't talk that much about the response. So let's take another look at that really quick. Besides the JSON, there's other stuff I get back. I get back the, the status and the response code, right? So this is good. I got 200 OK, which is good. I might get a 500 server error, 401 you know, forbidden, or any of the normal HTTP status codes. You can get those back. And then the person who writes the API may also define custom ones. They send back to give you some, some custom information. Yes? Uh, there's more, actually. If I take off, if I take off the, the start and index, yeah, I think I there's like 12. I, yeah. got, I, I did it, and I got four as well. Oh, you did? OK, okay maybe but there's But what I'm saying is there's no, yeah. uh, how do you identify which, which is host one, which is host two? Because there's no kind of simple identifier. You've got uh, an ID string, ID. which is very long, but that's not doesn't tell you if it's number one, number two, number three. So is well, it just what, what, is, what does number one mean? I mean, like, what, what are you sorting it, right? That's what, that's what, I'm, that's what I mean. So oh, when uh, it comes back. Yeah. So yeah. Even if I wanted to, or how would I know if I was looking for host number two, how would I know that it's ID of, you know, 51A7, like it is number two there? So, so m usually you use the ID as your, uh, like, if you're looking for a specific one, you will, you'll be keying off the ID, not its position in the array. 
What's some no, sort, I, I would, sort based on ID there, or there something? There is. There's, there's ways you can set that. You want to use the ID. And you can get information about a specific host by using the ID. Like if we look at the documentation again, if you notice, there is another method that is host, and you can provide the ID right on the URL, and then you would just get the information for the host with that ID. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, let's look at a little of these. There's you know host passing the ID on. You get one ID, uh, one host back, and all the information for it. There's this where you just get the whole list. And then there's the ones like I did where you can provide the start and how many records you want to return. Um, that's it. OK, let's look at some more examples, because I think it makes sense as you continue to try it a few more times. So we already did that. OK, so um, we can do the same thing with devices to get a list of the network devices policies, applications, these are all things that we can get a list of, and they're really great things to try and you know, just to get a feel for how that works. So if we do applications, um, let me scoot this over. So this is the same thing, except we're using application instead of host. It's still a get. We don't need any headers. This time, we're going to get 10 records back. And so this time you can see we've got slightly different information, right? We've got, this is the ID for that um, application. And then we've got like the description, uh, the ports, um, category, application group. So this is the kind of information that we get back for the applications. And all of that's detailed in the, in the docs. And if you want to know more about the specifics of all the stuff that's returned and how to use it, We've got a, a session later in the week, I think it's Tuesday, that's a deep dive on APIM that goes into a lot of use cases specifically on the APIM APIs. Um, I'd love to cover that, but we can't do it all in one session, so we've got it broken up. Um, okay, this is the same thing, but for network devices. So this is gonna give us back a list of devices. Here's our response. We got. 200 OK, that's good. This time we even got you know, different information that's more about the device. So we've got the ID, the type, it's a router, vendor, all these different things. Um, and we're going to use some of these to build up some, some applications. And policies, let me do policies too, just to be thorough. All right, and this one is um, to get a list of the policies. I'm going to get 10 this time. And here's the policies. You can see we've got the ID, policy name, policy owner. And these are the applications related to that policy. And, um, and then we have additional ones in the list and the actions that are associated with it. So the next thing we're going to do is that's great. We just learned how to use those APIs to get the list of things, right? List of hosts, list of devices, list of policies, which is part of the battle. You may need to get those, do some analysis of it, look at it. But you also may want to change things. Like you may want to create a policy or modify a policy. So we have to look at doing using a different kind of method. Instead of using get, we want to use post or put to create or modify something. And we also want to delete. So we're going to look at some examples that, that deal with that also. OK, so um, when we want to create a policy, we need to send it some information to say, create a policy you know, with this information that affects these ports, that affects this host, right? So it's a little bit different than just doing a get where we were just asking for information. We need to tell it to take an action, and we need to send some information into it. So what's different is that we use the request body to send some information into it. And we use the JSON format, just like we were getting the information back. We send some JSON in. The API uses it to create the policy. 
So let's take a look at this in the API docs first, and then we'll then we'll try one out. So policy. So here's what we, we just did when we were getting the list of the policies, right? And that was using the get method. Now we're gonna do a post on policy and that creates a new policy. And so if we expand that, we can see some different information. Um, where is the... So one of the things that's really great about the documentation is that it has this try it out button. So I wanna show you that. It actually will show you, it's gonna make a request for you. Here's the URL, here is the body that you're going to get back, but where's my request? Hmm. This is different. <laughs> okay, let's look at, let's do it in the, in the actual postman and take a look at it. Okay. So to create a policy, here's our URL. That's what we just looked at, um, policy. I'm using the local sandbox here. The method is gonna be a post. And then we have to do two things in addition to that. One, we have to specify a header. So last time we didn't add any headers. We didn't say anything about it. When you're doing a post, you need to specify the header to say, what kind of content you're sending. So content type is application JSON. That tells the API, hey, I'm, I'm sending you some information in JSON format that you're gonna use to complete this API call. So we, we give it that header. To do that, you just click on header, type those in on that line. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to send it the JSON to tell it what actual policy to create. So this is the JSON that we need to send in to create it. This um, identifier is the host that we want this policy to act on. And then we have the ports, and we're gonna be denying that port. So, and we also give it a policy name. I'm gonna call mine Learning Lab uh, Milan. Okay, and I'm gonna change this back to be the sandbox. Okay, but before I do that, one of the things I have to pass in is the host, right? So um, I want to go back to my example where I got my list of hosts. And I'm gonna make sure, I'm just gonna grab one of these host IP addresses so I can use it when I create my policy. So maybe in a real application, your user's picking that out of a list or something, right? And then you use it, put it into your variable, pass it in. All right, so we've got that. Uh, I'm just gonna change this so that I don't duplicate something I've done earlier. And I'm gonna change this back to sandbox. Okay, and send. And we got back a new status. We got 202 accepted, which is good. And then for the response, we got something different this time. We got back a task ID and a, and a URL. So what happens when you create it, when you create the policy, is that it, it kicks off a process to say, okay, we're starting to create this policy. It may need to be created and propagated out. And so you get back a task ID and you can use this URL to check on that task. So you can make a call back and say, did it complete? What's the status of that task? Did it fail? Did it succeed? Why did it fail? Get information back. And you'll see that pattern a lot. If you come to one of the APICEM deep dives, um, whenever you're making a change, creating, deleting, modifying, you'll get back one of these task IDs, and then there's a pattern to, to call and check on the status of that task until you know it's been created. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, just so you can see that. So we're gonna grab this URL. That's the ID of the task. And I'm 
I'm going to paste it here. And I still want to use my sandbox. And I'm going to, this is a, this is a get instead of a post because I'm just getting information. And done. And so you can see this is the response I get for that task. So it's progress is policy creation failed and it's a partial success. And the reason for that is, is that the way the sandbox is set up right now, it's a uh, database representation of a network. It doesn't have all the real hardware behind it. So it's saying, I was able to create this policy uh, entity basically, but I wasn't able to go like configure it on all the devices because the devices don't exist in the in the sandbox. So for sandbox, this is an okay result. If you were doing it on a real network with all the hardware behind it, you would get a complete success method. And uh -huh. what we can do is we can actually go in to back to the controller and we can go to policy and we should be able to see that policy. Is it up oh, learning lab? Yeah, that's it right there. So you can see it's, it's there. It was created. It shows the host and the ports, but you can see that it's not like fully active in the list. Manu, just, just a question. When you yeah. did your postman on the right hand side, you had some presets. Is that a collection that we can download so we can, you know, rather than having to do them from scratch? Um, or is that something you just created I, yourself? It's I created myself, oh, but right. I can post it for download for sure. Yeah. So, um, but it, it's all, all of the requests are in the learning lab, so you can get it from there too. Okay. Um, all right. So, a couple just kind of things that are handy to know about. When you're putting together that JSON that you're going to send in your, in your request, um, let me go back to it. So it's pretty easy to leave out a comma, leave out a brace, you know, get something wrong in the JSON syntax. So there's a very handy tool called JSON Lint, and that will like check and verify your JSON for you. So if you're getting a problem, you're getting an error, invalid JSON, you can take your JSON, paste it into JSON Lint, and it'll tell you exactly like, oh, you're missing a brace here, you're missing a comma here. And, can save yourself a lot of frustration <laughs> with that. So that's a great thing to do. Okay? Um, yeah, so this is some things that if you try that and it doesn't work, um, you know, double check the URL. Did you set the method to be post? A lot of times you'll try, it's still get, you have to do a post. Did you set the content type? Um, does the policy already exist? Maybe you need to try a different port because it's a shared sandbox, so maybe someone else was creating that exact uh, policy at the same time. Okay, um, then the next thing we might want to do after we created that policy is maybe we want to modify it or even delete it. Maybe we're like, we're done with that policy, we're ready to, to delete it. So let's take a look at deleting it and how we would do that using the APIs. <clears throat> so first I'm gonna do my uh, Retrieve the list of policies. And I'm going to find the one that is Learning Lab. So here's the one that I created. I'm going to grab this ID because I'm going to use it in the delete. So to delete a policy, it's very simple. It's the same pattern, except I just specify the ID of the policy that I want to delete. And so I'm going to try that, but I need to change back to sandbox. And the other thing that I do is I set the method, instead of being a get or instead of being a post, if I want to delete, I use delete, right? So I do that and send. And what did I do wrong? Ah. Send. 
And so here's the same thing. I got a 200, 202 accepted, which means great. It accepted that request. It's going off and doing something. And I got back the task information. So I could do another call on that task and get the progress of that task and see that the delete was finished. And then I could go into the controller and see that it was deleted. So is that pattern making sense? The next thing I want to do is take some of these same examples and show how we would make the calls from a Python script. So before we move on to that, any other questions about just the making the REST calls, how you put together a request, uh, how the response comes back? Anything with that? Nope. OK, cool. All right. <clears throat> OK, so the next part um, is covered in the Coding 102 Learning Lab. So if you're picking up in the Learning Labs online or at the event, this is all in the Coding 102 Lab. <clears throat> For this one, we're going to use Python. And the tools that you need to do that are your favorite text editor. You can use whatever you like. I like to use a tool called PyCharm, and there's a community edition of it. It's a Python editor that's very nice. But you can use any text editor that you want. Um, you do need to have Python installed. Um, we're using Python 3, so there's many versions of Python. Um, we're in all of our DevNet examples, we're using Python 3.4.2, I think. And you can go to the Python site and download it and install it. And then we're using a, a, an extra library that's a non-standard library that makes it really easy to make REST API calls. And that library is called Request. And so if you're working along at home, you'll install that Request library. Um, it's already installed on the Learning Lab machines for you. So if you're doing it there, you don't have to worry about it. And then these are some, some sites that are, are very helpful. And, and these slides and everything here will be available online. Um, and you can also email me directly if you don't get it all written down. OK, so let's look at our first. This is a, the most simple, uh, easiest program to make a, a REST API call from Python. And so let's look at the pieces that we have. So the first part is we're going to import request. That is importing that library that I mentioned that makes it really easy to make the calls. And then we're going to set up our, our URL. So this is our same URL pattern that we just used in Postman, right? And we're going to substitute in sandbox apic.cisco.com for the controller. And we're just putting that in a variable so it's easy to use, so we don't have to keep typing that out. And then we're going to say, uh, create a variable called response. Response equals request. This is using the request library, a method called get. And we're passing in the URL. And that makes the get request on that URL, brings back all the JSON, and puts it into this variable called response. And then we're just going to print out what we got back just so we can see it, right? So um, this is not a terribly useful program, but it just gives us the basic idea of, of what happens, right? OK, so let's try it out. So here's my, um, here's my editor. And um, this is, I'm going to change this to use the sandbox. OK. And um, I'm going to get a list of hosts for my first one. One thing that you'll notice is I'm using this verify equals false. So what that is, is, that's to do with the SSL certificate that's on the system that you're making the API calls to. This is um, verify false says, don't try to check the certificate and make sure it's valid and all that. The sandbox right now for the event has a, a self-signed certificate on it, and so this is just so we don't have to worry about accepting the certificates and doing all that. In real life, you would never want to do that in production, but it's just for a, a demo purpose. OK, so that's it. We're going to go to um, our command prompt. Can you guys see that OK? Is it big enough? A little bit bigger? Let's see. Um,
How's that? Better? Yeah, good? Okay. So um, we're gonna do, see where I am. <laughs> okay, so Python 3, and I have Python 2 and Python 3 installed on my system, so to run Python 3, I type Python 3, and then the name of the file, and we're gonna run it. And we can see, okay, starting here, here is all that JSON that we got back in Postman, right? But it's very unformatted and hard to read and not very useful, right? But we can see that we got it back and you can recognize some of those same elements we saw, like the host IP address, the host type, and so on. So that's just showing, we've, we've got the round trip working, right? We're making the request, we're getting it back, we could do something with it. But let's do something more useful than just show the JSON, right? Okay, great. <clears throat> so the next thing we're gonna do is, um, here's another one, this is the same thing, um, except we're just making a couple refinements to, to it. This time we went ahead and put the controller address in a variable because we use that over and over again. Even further, it's better to put it like in a config file. And so you've just got that in a file and all your applications call it, right? And um, here we're just building up the string. Here's the controller plus the URL that we want. This time we're doing the network devices and we're doing, we're printing out a little statement beforehand. So we run that one the same way. What's this one called? So same thing, this time we got back the uh, network device information, so we have things like the type of the device in there. And we're gonna take it another step. So we're just kind of building through each one of these programs, adding a few more things. So on this one, a lot of times we don't want to just take the JSON and display the JSON, because that's not very useful to anyone, right? We actually want to parse the JSON and get specific values out of it that we would display to the user or use in the program to feed into some other uh, you know, function or something like that. So on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that same piece of code to get the list of network devices. We're gonna do the same thing to make the request but this time we're gonna create a new object called get devices JSON, and we're gonna say get devices response dot JSON. And what that's gonna do is all that text that was in the response, it's actually gonna take it out, put it into a dictionary object that we can get through in here that's gonna have all the JSON in it in object format, so then we can parse through it. And then we can do things like this. So here's our parent, um, object we're gonna create. We're gonna set that right at that top response level. And then we can do a loop where we loop through for each of the items in that parent. And we're gonna say, I wanna see the item ID and the item type. And so here we're just using the names that are in the names of the elements in the JSON, right? And then it'll parse out the value and show it to us. So let's, let's try this one and take a look at how it comes together. So this one is called basic step two. Um, okay, so on this one, we, got, we get this warning because we're using the, the verify devices and then we loop through and we printed out the ID and the type for each one of the things that was returned in the big list of data. So we're actually like getting in and digging out those specific pieces. Then you could put it in a list for the user to choose from or send it to some kind of configuration script or do whatever next steps you wanna do. Does that make sense? Any, any thoughts, any questions there? I'm gonna go back to the code. Um, and so there's, we have, there's learning labs that really dig into this parsing of the JSON and go through that in detail. Um, 
it's pretty intuitive because you use the names from the JSON and you, and you just use the brackets and it's easy to do. But those labs go through it step by step, so if that's something you want to dig into and there's also some fancier tricks you can do with it, those are, those are good to follow up on too. Okay, so let's take it a few more um, steps. Oh, one other thing. This is, this is kind of handy for debugging. So sometimes when you're working on an application, you want to see the JSON that got returned. Um, like maybe you want to write it to a log, a log file, so you can see, oh, this is what I was getting back. Or you just want to show it on your screen in a way that you can actually read it. So this is a method you can use that'll actually print it and kind of pretty print the JSON so that it's easy to read. So let me show you this one just to stay. So there's our controller and this one is So you can see this is the one where we just made the simple call to get the list of three devices, but this time we're showing it back to us, you know, pretty printed instead of just the big dump of all the text. So that's really nice for, like I said, like logging and debugging and things like that. All right, so the next thing I want to show is our application when we were creating the policy, when we made the request to create the policy. We want to do the same thing from our script, but we're going to add a couple of steps to it to kind of um, put it together and make it an interesting. So all of the, this code is available in GitHub. If you go on GitHub and search for Cisco DevNet, we have a GitHub group, we have repositories with all of our sample code that we're putting up there for learning labs and so on. These are all in the coding skills sample code repository. So you can definitely get, get to those. Okay, so we're gonna do a create a policy and we're gonna do a couple, chain together several requests and several steps. First, we're gonna get a list of the host and then we're gonna pick a host out of that list. You can imagine maybe you're asking the user to pick a host, but we're just gonna pick like the second one just to keep it straightforward. Um, then we're gonna get a list of the policies and we're gonna get a count how many total policies exist. We're gonna create a new policy and then we're gonna get the count again so we can see that, hey, yeah, you know, we created a policy here. It is. So we're gonna put all of those together into one application. You can kind of see how it fits. All right, so let's just take a, a tour through the code really quick. So you're gonna recognize all the steps that we've done previously. So import request, import JSON, which is our, our library that makes it nice to deal with JSON. Uh, set our controller address. Then we're gonna do the part to get our list of the host. So we build up the URL and we make the request. Um, so request.get, here's the get host URL. We're gonna get that back. Now we've got an object with our list of hosts in it. And we're just gonna select, I guess it's the third one out of the list, because um, it starts with zero. So host, sec third one in the array, and we're gonna get the host IP out of that JSON. And we're gonna print it out. This is the selected host. Question? Oh, I thought I heard something. No? Okay. Uh, then, so we'll see that in the application. Next, we're gonna get the count of policies. So same pattern, right? We've got the URL that gives us the count of the policies, make the request using the get method, get back the JSON, echo it back to the user. This is the, the number. And then we're going to actually, this is where we create, oh, we're also gonna print out all the policies. So we're gonna see a list of the policies and the policy names. And then this is where we're actually going to create the policy. So we create a variable that's got the JSON in it that we're gonna pass in. Remember when we were doing it in Postman, we had that JSON, we specified the port and the name, we passed it in. So same thing here. I'm gonna change the name here to be, to be this, and I'm gonna make this, um, 
And here's where we do the same steps. Set the header. Here's the URL for the policy. And this time, when we use the request library to make the request, we use the post method instead of the get method, right? Because we're creating. And we use it, we looked it up, we saw we use post to create, so it's the same thing. Pass in the URL, pass in our payload of JSON data, data, and pass in our custom header that we created. We'll get back some kind of response saying, did it, did it work, what happened? Um, and then we just do the same thing. We're gonna check on our task ID to see what the progress was. And then we're gonna get the count again and see that it hopefully incremented and we have a new policy there. So the, all of those steps, but it's the same pattern over repeated. So let's give it a try. Um, I need to get a, oh yeah, okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so the first thing was we, we got that list of hosts and we selected the host and then we echoed back to the user, here's what it is. The total number of policies was 16. Here's the list of the policies that we had created. This is the result that we got back from creating the policy. This is the JSON, so we got back this task ID. We could check on it if we wanted to. And then here's our new count. Now there's 17 policies. And here's our new policy in the list that we created. And so we can see that it, that it worked and we're, we're good to go. Um, so questions about that, about specifically about making the post versus the get and how you do that in the code. It's really just one difference, right? Instead of request.get, it's request.post. And you gotta send in the, the JSON. So that's the main, that's the main difference. It really all comes down to this one line, right? Right here. So that's, that's where you're doing it. If you tried it with a get and you sent in the JSON, you would get an error saying, why are you sending me JSON with a get? It doesn't make any sense. The API would give you error back. And then the other thing we looked at was to delete. And this is the same idea um, that we did in Postman. This time our URL has the ID for the policy that we want to create. So I can look back here. Here's the ID for that one I just created. So I'm gonna delete it and put it on there. And this time when we're making the request, we need to use the delete method. So we do request.delete, send in that URL and hopefully it will delete, and then we'll get back our response from the uh, task, with this task information. So let's try that. Okay, so we can see here's the response we got from doing the delete, and the task pro progress was that the policy was deleted successfully. So that's the information we get back. Okay, so that's, that's what I wanted to cover with REST and Python. Um, any questions or anything you wanna dig into there? Just to end, I have a really simple, fun example of doing a similar thing in JavaScript to show a topology visualization. And that's just to show you how you can call the same APIs from a different platform and do something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I apologize, maybe I missed it at the beginning, but um, I understood everything from the programming scripting point of view. Uh, however, just uh, maybe on the beginning was stated was the EM server. It is just some database server which contains all the information about all the devices or... What it's coming. Okay, so it's using um, APIC EM, our APIC EM controller. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the actual controller and it has an API layer in front of it so that instead of doing things through just through the GUI, we can call it through the through the um, APIs and do programmability. Yes, yes, it. I understand this. Uh, but okay. in case I wanted to simulate uh, this, for example, in some simple lab or something, uh, how could I do that to achieve? Uh, I mean, the server. How to get the server? How Is it some server? application? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's not released yet. It's about, it's, it's in EFT2, I think we're in sort of preview mode with it. Um, it's in our sandbox, which you can access for free 24 mm -hmm. seven. Um, this address that I'm using, sandboxapic.cisco.com, you can use it. And if you follow, like, uh, log into developer.cisco.com and get updates, we're going to have information about when it's released um, uh -huh. very shortly. Thank so. you. Yeah, I don't know if it's, um, I don't, what we're showing here is not fully released yet. There may okay. be some betas and some things that are out no, there, you but know it the is coming. You the one that they use on the, on the D cloud? Um, then you can get one where you can actually, you can use it to do the provisioning, and I think it has the yeah. API as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just not into the, um, the GA release. Oh, okay. is not there yet. Okay. So, yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? Does it look fun? Are you guys ready to try some REST calls? Yeah, you're gonna go try it? Okay, good. Okay, so this is, like I said, this is, um, I think it's just nice to show, part of the great thing about REST is that it's so easy to use on different languages, different platforms. So I wanted to show you a, a counter example uh, from JavaScript. And what I'm gonna use it with is n our next UI library. So this is a, a framework that Cisco's working on. This is not released to you, this is kind of preview. And it's a whole set of JavaScript libraries and um, functions that help you do network visualization. So topologies and different kinds of visualizations and there's lots of refinement and cool stuff going on with it. We have sessions on it later in the week if you're interested in it. And it's actually used in some of our products like the APIC EM GUI uses it. We're using it internally too. But we're working on it to have it as a, as a release thing also. So. Um, let me just show you this really quickly. Okay, so this is an HTML file with some JavaScript in it. So switch your mindset from Python to JavaScript. Um, but you'll see that we're doing a lot of the same things right here. This is um, one way in JavaScript to make a REST requ API request. And you'll notice a lot of the same pieces of it, right? What's the type? It's a get. Um, what's the URL? It's our same thing, except this time we're gonna use another call we haven't looked at yet, which gives you back physical topology information. So we can call that in Postman, we can see all the data that comes back, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we've got some other information about you know, what to do with it when we get the JSON back. And what we're gonna do with it is we're going to, if it's successful, call this function called show topology. And what that does is it uses the next UI toolkit to create a topology object. And we set some different stuff about it. And then it's gonna show us that, that topology. So let's take a look at that really quick. I'm running out of time, but I, it's always fun. So, um, So this is using Next inside the controller software, inside the GUI. We're gonna do something similar through using the APIs. So if I look at topology, you can see there's this method called physical topology. And you can see this is the kind of stuff that it returns um, in the response. Here's the schema. So we're gonna get back uh, the information about the nodes, their location, the name of the nodes, the links between the nodes, things like that. So let's try that one really quick in Postman. Okay, oops, didn't need that. So we're gonna try this in the sandbox. We're gonna make this a get. We're gonna send, okay. Here's the, the topology information. Tells you the layout of those nodes, right? Now we're gonna run it from this JavaScript that we were looking at. And I'm gonna open this in a browser. And we get this, which is a visualization of the topology of that network that we have been getting list of things about through all of those API calls. And this the next toolkit does some nice things where you can let me open this in Chrome.
you can, you know, the user has some interaction they can do with it. If, if you have information about the, the icons that represent the different types, you can specify to show the icons and it'll show you a very nice diagram. You can change um, colors. You can do all this kind of stuff. Um, but what's really cool is like just with that simple line of code, making that one API call, combined with this library, we can get this visualization in like, you know, a few lines of code, just a handful of lines of code. So that's kind of just where you can go with taking the REST APIs and combining with other stuff. Okay, um, I'm gonna finish on time, amazingly. Let's see. So like I said, if you wanna know more about Next, look on the session, there's a session on it, I think tomorrow, um, where they were gonna dig in deeper to it. Okay. So we're done. Um, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. I live in Austin, Texas in the US. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. Those who never fail are those who never try. So if you're not trying, you don't get to fail. But if you don't try, you also don't do anything and don't learn anything. And I think it's a good one for learning to program because lots of trial and error when you're learning to program, right? Lots of mistakes and debugging that has to go on. Um, and Please visit us on developer.cisco.com. You can follow me. I, my uh, Twitter handle is at Mandy, M-A-N-D-Y, Whaley, W-H-A-L-E-Y. And at Cisco DevNet is our DevNet Twitter handle. And um, we have all kinds of updates and cool stuff going on. Right now, if you fill out your developer profile on developer.cisco.com, you get a cool t-shirt that'll come in the mail to you later. Um, and that's it. I hope to meet all of you guys later and throughout the week. So, thank you. All right. And don't forget your ticket. <laughs> don't forget to get your ticket as you go out. Get your badge scanned so you can get your five for.